Welcome to Looptopia, where we're building our own utopian homestead. Today, I'm going to hand dig a well. Now, I haven't done this in probably 13 years, 12, 13 years. The reason I'm hand digging it is because we don't have access to water to water drill down, and we really don't have a lot of electricity. Now, I will be using some things. I, I have a battery power auger I'm going to try, and I've never used it before, so this will be fun. And uh, this, believe it or not, you know, my YouTube channel is so old that I was the first guy to hand dig a well on YouTube and it's gotten like hundreds of thousands of hits. And I'm pretty much going to use the same method. There's different ways to do it. I prefer this way because I feel like you get better water flow. Also, I'm doing it uh, for a shallow well. So if you live where you have to dig a couple hundred feet down, this is not really going to work that well because you're going to need to spend a lot more money. But if you can hit water within 20, about 20 to 25 feet, then this will work. So let me walk you through it. There are different ways to do shallow wells. Kind of popular on YouTube right now is just driving it in. And you can use something like this. It has tiny little gills. I don't know if you can see them. Um, what they do is they actually take like a sledgehammer and hammer these things deep into the ground and it pulls water and you don't have to buy a casing. It's cheaper to do. They have metal ones because what I've noticed, anyone that I've talked to that does this, they usually bend really bad and break and they get clogged with sand really easy. So I'm not a big fan of driving wells. Not like this. Um, you can do it, but I'm not a big fan of it. So we're going to do an old school well with a casing and uh, a shaft inside. And here's how we're going to be digging, which is kind of interesting. So we're going to use a manual pump, and I will put on a pump later. I have one. Um, so what will happen is you put a manual pump, but when you start digging, you're going to go through topsoil, which here smells like pig poop, like, you know, it's like a peat moss. Then we hit a bunch of clay. Then we hit sand again, like sandy ground, kind of like, uh, what do they call it, sandy loam? Then we started hitting water inside something called uh, the water bearing sand strata. And we stayed in this about 10 feet. So 10 feet in the strata, and the other 10 feet is everything else. So just give you an idea. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get down to this water bearing sand strata. And you should be good. So let me share a little bit about where to choose to put a well. Usually if you have two hills, you kind of want to put it in the valley where the water runs off. So if your land has uh, kind of a low point, that's a good place. But look at my property here, and do you see the reeds sticking up? The reeds are where the water is. And you can kind of use some common sense, because these reeds, they're swamp reeds. They like lots of watery land. So I know that the water is kind of running in this direction and pooling here, and which helps get you an extra little bit of water. Now last time when I dug a well, I actually used uh, dowsing. We had like a little pendulum and we'd find the well. Um, and it worked. It worked great. So I'm a big believer in dowsing. But because I'm pretty close to the shore and I know the water table's just a few inches down because when I dig I see water, I don't see a point. I think anywhere I put this well is going to work. So if you're kind of in the same boat where you're in the coastal areas or, or the swamps, probably don't need a dowser. So when you start a homestead, and for you, a lot of people watching this channel, they are want to be homesteaders or beginner level. Again, you're going to want to, if you can afford it, switch over to electric tools because gas is getting stupid and also it's just not reliable. So hopefully you're switching over to some sort of solar or wind and you can charge these things up. This is the 80 volt, uh, this is the 80 volt brushless Greenworks Pro auger. It is one or two man. It's pretty big. And it takes the 80 volt battery. Now it's a 7 8 auger drive so this is compatible with other kind of augers out there. If you already have the drives it comes without the drive. So uh, I'll show you how to hook all that up. Now I had a choice of which way to go with uh, you know E. I think there's another brand uh, Ego and there's I don't know there's a lot of cordless brands these days but what I like about Greenworks is every single product I've ever had from them works great. Like their chainsaw's awesome, their weed whacker's awesome, their light's awesome. 
So once you make the commitment of going with one company, you try to buy the same so you can use the batteries for everything. And this uses the same 80 volt as my large chainsaw and one of our weed whackers. One more thing I forgot to mention about the Greenworks Pro Auger. It's kind of the bastard child of the Greenworks tools. What I mean by that is, if you look, and there are no reviews about this thing. There's no information anywhere. And I didn't even know Greenworks made an auger until I dug far enough on the internet and found it. It's not something advertised, and I don't know why. So I'm hoping that this tool is good. Um, remember, it only comes the tool only. You still have to have the battery and stuff. So we'll see what happens, but every other Greenworks product I have is awesome. So I'm hoping good things happen. So when you order the Greenworks, like I said, it doesn't even come with a battery. I have one. Uh, it does come with some, it looks like three shear pins, like safety pins. And I had to order APL Man Auger bit. And I wanted a big one, an eight inch. So I'm going to be putting in a, a decent little shaft there, like a larger uh, hole. And I also have extension shafts. I've never used these. I don't know if they're going to work. So here's the issue. This only goes down a few feet. And with the extension shaft, it's only going to go down a few more feet. So I am going to have to switch over and hand dig this. But in my old video, I did everything by hand. Uh, I'm like 12 years older now, so I'm going to actually use a machine to start this. And hopefully it saves my back. Again, this is a pretty big investment. If you're digging a well, you can do it a lot cheaper just by hand. But we're going to be putting in a bunch of fence posts for our garden over here. And, man, it's just worth it to me. I'd rather make it easier with an auger. And later on, as we expand the property, we're probably going to put in more wells and more fences. And, you know, I'm getting old. So if there was a young person out here, it'd be nice. All right, so this is the first time we've used this. Now, in, when I've used augers in the past, they twist and kick, and they have a shear pin. So I'm gonna go slow, and hopefully this works. It has like a safety button, and it has a forward and reverse on, this, uh, on the handle here. So we're going forward. Let's try this first. So I kind of was just letting the weight of the machine do it, and then there at the end you saw me push down and it went a lot faster. I think probably the better way is just to be patient and go slow. So I'm going to go real slow here. Now I'm going to have to reverse it. Get it out. So if it gets stuck like that, you just hit reverse, go back into forward. I think that's the very first time I've ever used one of these. They're battery powered. Um, it has good strength actually. And just like a regular auger, you kind of have to put a lot of weight. It'd probably be way easier with two people. Uh, I would see it was simple to figure out and use. And so far everything's working good. I'll update you in a little bit after I, I go down a little while. So far this is where we're at. So it's probably about two feet down, maybe a little longer. And here's what's coming up. So far so good. Like I said, you kind of have a choice. You can muscle through it, but it's going to catch all the time. It'll go a lot faster, but it'll swing around. Or you can just be patient and let the machine do the work. One little unexpected bonus is this thing has lights if you want to work at night. Check it out. Very cool. Nice little bonus. Didn't even know about that. So here's the extension piece. And you basically just plug in the pins. Uh, this pin didn't come with a clip, which kind of annoyed me. I guess it fell out or I lost it. But I had a spare. Uh, we'll see how it works. That looks kind of shady. So here's the uh, extension bar on here and the hole. Uh, we're a little over three feet and it is kind of struggling because what happens is I think you have to stay perfectly straight and if you start getting angled at all it gets twisted and jumps back on you and it's hard to stay straight over it when it's that far. So 
Most likely this is probably about it for the extension. I'm gonna have to go to hand after this. Also, this is eating battery like crazy. Got it? All right, so this is a lot heavier with an extension. You gotta be pretty strong to muscle it in. Oh, it's reverse. See, it's a lot more twisty. So you're gonna have to reverse it and get it straight on. That's about it. I mean, it's getting really hung up on the, the dirt. It's incredibly hard dirt. But now you see how much more twisty it is with the extension. It just takes it out of your hands. So that's it. I'll bring it up. And my advice to pull it up fast. You'll get more dirt out. And you can just keep pecking at it, but I think I'm probably going to switch over to hand by now. So I stopped for um, about six weeks digging this because we needed water immediately and I wasn't sure where the water table was in this. I thought it would be real shallow and it wasn't. So now I'm back to it because the rain's not coming like it should and I need water badly. So I am now to the next step where we are done with using the auger. It's as far as it'll go. So now you have to start adding pipes and you get these little connectors pipe connectors and you'll screw them on and this thing actually opens at the head here and you'll add the pipes to that because a lot of times you think oh I just add it on this end no add it on this end and to get it loose you're actually gonna have to stick another pipe in and twist with it it's uh it's really on there so you'll use another pipe as leverage to open and close this thing all right so you get an idea that you just spin it once it's locked in place oh I think I'm going the wrong way here hold on an idea you spin it once it's locked in place and you just spin and if you put a pole in there that really helps get it loose so something you, you might not know this is a three-fourths pipe so when you buy it for that it matches three-fourths and you um, unscrew it believe it or not I was trying to yank these caps off but I forgot that they just unscrew but you might have to use pliers to start them and you can kind of see the threads they're dirty inside but there you go so save your caps so at this point, we're six feet into the dig here. Uh, that's what it should look like. You notice the new poles in the by the blade. And when you assemble it, like stick a pole in the blade and twist with the handle and get it really tight before you put it in to the ground because if this comes loose and gets stuck in the ground, you'll never get it out. So it's been a couple weeks since we've done this. I pulled a bucket and look at the top of the hole. There's a giant spider web here. So a spider's been keeping all the bugs out of the hole. So thank you for your service. So this is fun. A frog moved into the well. So I gotta move him out, poor guy. I can't just drop the blade in there with him in there. How am I gonna move him out safely all the way down this thing? Cause this hole doesn't look deep, but it's deep. All right, so we got him out without anybody getting hurt. I think he was stuck. I think he was too. He could have drowned down no, there. No, he grabbed that shovel and <laughs> gripped on. Yeah, because that I don't see how sh he could climb up out of a four-foot hole. Like, I don't think they have and that kind water. of skills. So there's nothing to brace off of. Yeah, it's all slippery mud. Uh, well, let's put him somewhere cold and wet. Let's see. I don't think they like the sun. No. As you dig, you will feel. You'll get a feel for this thing. And when the the blade is full, it'll kind of just skid around and it won't feel like it's going anywhere. So it'll feel like it's digging, like this is digging, this is digging, and then it just kind of skids. And now it's easy. That means it's full. So you bring it straight up. So you want to view this closer? Now there's water under here because there was surface water. That's not actual well water. It's just riding down the ground. And you'll see it come up. All right, and then what we did is to make this easier we put two blocks I covered them with some cardboard so we don't damage the pipe too much and what you do is you just lift it up and bang it out and that's it that came out really easy this time but usually we actually have a shovel over there because they're we're digging in some super sticky clay and I'm moving into softer clay so this is a good sign that means we're getting to a different layer so I'm about 10 feet down 
and I've added extensions to this and you can see that it went from sticky like this is like the consistency of dog squeeze like it sticks to everything really really sticky mud then it turned to blue clay for about four feet and right at eight feet I'm hitting sand so I think this is promising the layers are changing pretty quick okay so hopefully maybe you can see this I'm about 12 feet down and it is completely dry uh, let's see if I can zoom in because I'm in the sand layer now so um, when I started there it is see it's all dry when I started uh, there was water sitting in here and I was saying people are like oh you know you got you hit water at three feet no it was surface water that just couldn't drain through eight feet of clay so we're through the clay now and I hope that's a promising sign I've only got like we're at let's see about 12 feet and I've got four more chances to hit it after about 25 feet the shallow pumps won't work anymore they can't lift the water so let us pray okay so at around 13 feet the water's starting we got so lucky 13 feet now I'm gonna dig probably another good 10 feet until the sediment changes and that's the sweet spot so right now we're kind of like in this weird sandy stuff uh, I don't know if they can see it with this shade let me move to the other side so we went through a lot of weird layers like this stuff looked like gravel and sand and then gravel sand and then we started hitting this red clay again and bam we hit the water so I'm gonna dig and dig and dig and hopefully there's enough okay so I'm down in this uh, I'm around 13 feet where I'm hitting the water I'm about a foot into the water but I forgot to mention um, this coming up is wet clay and it creates a huge suction and it takes a lot of muscle so to avoid getting your auger stuck because if it gets stuck and you try to back out and it loosens you are screwed that uh, you'll never get that auger out of there so what you have to do is you do like two or three twists and when you feel it getting really tight back up a little then do another two or three twists back up a little and kind of pull it loose otherwise if you just dig 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 all in one direction it will create such a suction cup you can't get it out all right so you can get an idea of what I'm bringing up again you kind of have to be careful you don't knock all the sand back in but it is very wet sand it feels like you're at the beach okay so this is kind of what I was talking about you go a little towards it and back and towards it and back and towards it and back and it won't get stuck you just rock it also notice I'm going down to about a foot which kind of hurts your back bent over doing this but when I add the next pipe I'll be able to handle it a lot better it won't be like six feet in the air so go down to about a foot if you're tall enough all right let me get back to work so we've gone down 20 feet and it is just more sand and water so around I don't know I think it was like 13 feet we hit sand and I'm not real happy about that because it clogs really easy I was hoping to hit maybe some clay under the sand but I'm gonna make it work and this is a reason why I decided to put a casing and go with an old school well instead of the new fancy wells that you see all over YouTube which are these things and what these are they have these in metal and PVC uh, I think they're called points or something but what it is is you can hook all these together and actually just hammer these directly into the ground and if you're in the right place they will get water they work I think it's an enormous amount of work I mean although this is a lot of work but I don't think they pull water nearly as good as giving it a casing like you know you're talking about tiny I don't know if you can see them tiny little slits and sand this isn't gonna work this is gonna clog in like a day so this casing will give lots of the room for the sand to hit the bottom so this is four inch casing which you gotta gotta get at your hardware store let me show you everything you need you need a cap for the bottom of it you need two inch pipe now this is only if you're gonna do like a manual hand pump um, if you're going to do a 
motorized pump. Sometimes you can just hang the PVC into the casing. The, uh, it comes with like a, a tubing. Uh, but I'm kind of going old school. What I'm doing is I'm hooking up a manual option and I'm going to run a pump. So I'm going to have both options in there. Because I'm uh, counting for days when, you know, there is no more electricity and stuff. Uh, in case there's like a grid down situation or I just don't want to haul out a, a battery and deal with the pump. You know, batteries wear out after a few years, so I want to have an option to get water out of the ground. You need this thing. It's called a foot valve. It is uh, one and one quarter inch. One and one quarter. It screws on to, you're going to need this special connector piece. It's called a reducing male adapter. There it is. And it goes from one quarter inch to one inch. Excuse me, one and a quarter. Here, there, there you go. Goes from one and a quarter to one inch. You're going to need this piece. You'll also find this at the hardware store. It's usually in the well section. So wherever the foot valves are, you're going to find these. You're going to need some two inch uh, couplings and two inch pipe. So because I'm only going 20 feet, they sell these in 10 foot strips. I should be right at the, the top of this. Because I'm even though the hole's 20 feet, I'm going to fill up a good two or three feet with gravel. So this is going to stick up two or three feet. You're also going to need primer and joint sealant. So don't skip out on that. Make sure you clean all the ends. I cleaned everything. Uh, and oh, and a saw. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut gills in this. And this is going to let the water come into the casing. I'm going to put gills up to about six, seven feet maybe. I don't need to go that far because uh, I think my water table will probably drop. Right now my water is 10 foot. Like the hole's 20 foot and the water's 10. So if it drops 5 feet I can still get water. Like through the season the well line will drop. Uh, I'm going to saw this a bit and you'll see how I do it. And that's it. It's, it's pretty easy to get the casing together. It just takes a few minutes. What you're going to do is now roll it. You don't want to put all the cuts on one side. Go up a few inches just for stability and then just do it again. Alright, so that actually kind of hurts because uh, you want to wear... I, I did wear glasses, but maybe a face shield too. That <laughs> This plastic hurts. So anyway, you can get an idea that it's going to go down. Like I said, we're at 10 feet. I plan on sinking it about... By the time I put gravel in, it'll be about eight feet. So this is about seven feet alternating cuts. And they don't have to be pretty to work. Uh, you're just trying to make enough room that the sand doesn't clog everything. All right, so now I'm gonna do the cap. And in case you've never done PVC, I assume you know how to do it, but just in case, I'll uh, show you real quick how to do it. A lot of times these are on super tight and you gotta use pliers to get them off. Uh, so if you some pliers might be handy too. try not to get the purple goo on you So what this stuff is is primer kind of melts and gets the uh, Gets this ready to have the next component Which fuses it together So you take this out it will stain anything you touch be aware let it drip out a little and You go around this like ten times you just keep going and going. Three, six. And kind of a good idea when it's right is when the uh, the little printed stuff here starts to melt. When you see the the printing on here disappear, you're in good shape. And if you're really fancy and want to be a plumber, you can mark everything. So your PVC work looks nice. You get a marker and figure out how to fit it. But this is going to be 20 feet under the ground. Don't care. You're also going to want to get the inside of the cap. So do both sides. So a good idea is to knock all the plastic shards out of here. So you're not drinking plastic. And then do your gluing. 
This is your glue. Make sure you've shake, shaken it up really good. Um, I'm using Oatly, so it kind of looks like wet oats. It should be really runny. Like that. This is almost too thick. But it should be nice and runny. And what you're going to do is you go around this, and you have to work fast with the glue. It dries quick. And thin it out good. Don't leave globs everywhere like this. You're going to move it around, move it around, move it around. Just keep going. And then do the inside of the coupling on one half of it. Take it in there. And then when you connect them, you want to work fast and connect them while they're wet. You put it on as far as it'll go, and then you turn it a quarter. And that was actually too much glue, so I'll wipe a bunch off. My plumber friends are judging me, and I deserve it. All right. Okay. Okay, so this is the foot valve. And depending on how far you're going, sometimes there's a little uh, ring on here that you would tie a string to. Because if you drop this down the well, it sucks. You'll never get it out. But I'm going to connect these ahead of time so nothing should drop. So you need to actually wrench this in pretty hard with this. Um, you know, wrench it in good and then you're going to use a coupler to attach these two together. And you'll put that at the end. That's all you need to know. Alright, so everything's connected now. I've got 25, excuse me, a 20 feet of the 2 inch and I've got 20 feet of the four inch with the cap on the end. And that's what you're going for and there's the gills going up that first pipe. So it has been three days of digging and the problem is we went to 20 feet but the second day we came back and it was mudded up to 14 feet and we had to dig through six layers of slop and we thought we cleared everything and then we came back today and it had collapsed more with some clay we had to dig out another three or four feet and it was really exhausting uh, the last couple feet suck and one tip if I you know I showed you you need to rock that thing if you're in clay you do not want this blade to stop or you will lose it you got to keep swiveling 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 in wet clay so it's 20 foot shaft I'm gonna put some larger rocks on the bottom then a little smaller ones and I'm gonna probably do this about so it's like six inches of this six inches of this and what will happen is this will create um, a reservoir and kind of a filter so the silt doesn't quite get through so I'm kind of going to make a water filter down on the bottom of this I did about six inches of these and then I did six inches of these and I just judged it kind of on the bucket because the bucket's about the same size as the hole so I'm assuming that's about right next thing I will do is put some pea gravel like this uh, well it's actually a little smaller than pea gravel I'll put a, a little layer of that down and I've kind of went from large rock, medium rock, to small rock. And then I will uh, put the pipe in and pack it around with a little medium rock and then mostly this stuff. So we now set the pipe in and pushed it in. And we're leveling it. And then I'm going to pour pea gravel and then fine gravel around it. Okay, so it is up and running. Um, I had to go out and get medium gravel. The only thing I could find was marble chips. I hope they'll work. So uh, we're in business. So next thing I'm going to do is insert the uh, well shaft that we built earlier with the foot valve on the bottom. So I'm inserting this piece. Now depending on how you set it up, uh, some people build it as they go and they drop it down. The way I'm doing I should be able to just set this thing in there. And then what I'll do is I'm going to pull this up about a good foot so in case a bunch of sand and dirt collects it will collect on the bottom of the casing and it'll just give it a better chance to free flow better and worst comes to worst I gotta blast this thing out every you know six months to a year with a hose and just run it out the opposite direction if that happens and we just blow the sand out and bring it up so it's in so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide on what's called a well head let me show you what that is you seat this on here and then I'll pull up the tube and I will tighten the bolts and that will lock it in place so it's a foot up from the bottom of the casing. 
All right, so here's the progress. We pulled it up a foot. Um, now, it's up to you how high you want this. I'm tired of bending over, so I'm going to put this thing almost standing level. Once the pitcher pumps on over there, uh, it will be nice and comfortable to pump this thing and not crippling. And what we'll do is we'll build a little stand under it that we can just put a bucket so we don't have to bend over. Ergonomics, baby. This is what it's like to homestead with a chiropractor, by the way. Just ergonomics all the time. We're like, nope, we're not bending over, we're not doing this. Uh, so, but that's up to you. If you want to higher or lower, cut the pipe. So now the last thing we got to do is put on the pitcher pump. Now remember, we're going to do a manual pump just for all health situation and just in case things don't work. But I'm also going to put in a, uh, a jet pump just to pull it up. I didn't put a submergible pump in this, but I'm, I'm going to do one where you... It's called a uh, shallow well pump. I'll show it to you. And it's just kind of like an all-in-one unit. It's way easier than dealing with the submergibles. Although submergibles do get better power and they're quieter. So keep that in mind. Okay. All right, so this is a pitcher pump, old school. The reason I got this is very few things go wrong. There's like a seal in it, and that is about it. Um, it should last forever as long as you have enough seals. Order a couple extra seals. You can always cut them and make them if you need to. Um, this is a reducer piece just like the other one that went to the foot valve. So it's the same size you need. And this will slip on, and we're going to dry fit this until we know where we want it. And also we'll be able to pop this off. Now, if this doesn't work, if it leaks everywhere, then we got problems. Oh, I gotta screw this in a little harder. There we go. But it might not. So we're gonna try it just like this and see what happens. So with a pitcher pump, you gotta prime the pump, which means you kind of like put it down, you, you pull it up, and open a cavity, and then pour water and let it sit for a good five minutes until the seal gets soaked and expands, and then it creates pressure. So I've done that, and as they say, if you have a foot valve, which I do, because we sent it, that it stays primed, but I don't know if that's true. Um, one thing I have seen do done is people will put a ball stop right here and shut it off when they're done so the water stays up in the uh, pitcher. And that might happen too if we get annoyed with priming this thing a lot. So we didn't want to contaminate the well and we're using filtered water. I don't think you should use like water that uh, we we're going to use just our standard water um, from the rainwater, but it has algae and stuff in it. And I don't know if it's a good idea to contaminate the well right off the bat. When you pour this in, it is slowly filling. Now that the seal is wet, this stuff's going down. And you just keep filling it until it stops doing that. And it's still going in. So this might take a while. We'll be back. If uh, this is enough water, we might still need to prime it more. That's the water we put in, so I'm not counting that. Now the first water will be very dirty. Like, really dirty. And it's going to stay dirty for a long time. It's coming out pretty clean. There we are. And we're our first well water. Look. Yay! Uh, it's P. Brown. It's working. It's working. Okay, so you're going to get a lot of mud and sand. And depending on what your setup is, what some professional companies do is they will run this thing, and I'm not exaggerating, for like 12 hours and just spill water. But it kind of destroys the pump because this is going through your pump. Um, you can get those pumps that kind of like drain pond water that are handleless. But what I'm going to do is we are going to actually use this for garden water. And we're going to hand pump a bunch until this water goes a lot clearer. Then I'll hook up the electric. But you will get just mud water for a while. But I will say this, good pressure. I think we're going to have endless water. It doesn't seem to be slowing down. 
Okay, I think we got enough film. Do you think we got enough film? Everybody happy? Right. My buddy was like, you can never dig a well. <laughs> well suck it. Look at it. It's working. <laughs> you can dig a well. Don't let people naysay you. Um, total price on this, if you don't have to buy the tools, uh, okay, so like the pipes and the actual auger, you're looking at about $200 with the couplers. This picture is about 50 bucks, and the PVC is probably another 50 bucks. So, I don't know, around maybe um, 450, 500 bucks for the whole thing with the gravel and stuff like that. Maybe let's just say 500. 500 bucks to put in your own well, as opposed to 10 grand. Well, for shallow wells, they will. The, the big expense is they have to bring out their machine, and they're like just to bring out the machine. And to have all the gas and to unload it and to do this because the actual machine will do this in like you know an hour but yeah, but the fuel cost of just driving out now. so the lowest price when i checked was over a thousand dollars for them to dig it not with all the other parts not to put the the casing and all that stuff in so we spend 500 but i can re replicate this well for about 200 to 250 bucks and now i, I have the it. tool we're going to put wells all over the property and it'll save us a bunch of money. Now, if you want to get an actual pump, like an electric pump, it's probably about another 200 bucks. Uh, so for 700 bucks, you can have a, a actual well, a shallow well pump running. Um, and about two days of work. Yeah, and about two to three days of... And you've got to be pretty strong or work as a team. Like, if you weren't strong, you could do this with two or three friends all pulling the uh the dirt up together so i think that's enough i'm gonna go dump this in the garden and we'll just keep pumping and pumping and pumping for a few days that's it so you can see all the sand coming out and this would have probably clogged a filter in like two seconds <laughs> so we're going to just keep doing this until there's no more sand ish well minimal sand the whole process took i'd say about three full days of digging but we also had a lot of problems with the strand uh the sand strata layer kind of collapsing over and over we had to dig it out a few times to get it to stay stable enough to put the casing down uh so you're looking at about a three-day project again i think totally worth it very brutal project though you better be kind of strong like we got mud <laughs> everywhere i got calluses and blisters on my hands um it's no joke it is hard work but again you save a lot of money and once you have the equipment you can drop wells all over the place for like 250 bucks you know uh, it's even cheaper if you had some pipe you know that's uh i think that's really worth it if you look at it that way and also i am concerned that things are going to get bad with power and you know the shortage is coming out the food shortages and all this and we really um we're not growing a garden just for pleasure like this has to feed us and we were getting really freaked out because our rain barrels were empty it hadn't rained in like eight or nine days and at least we have muddy well water right now to water the plants and that's working fine and i will test it once it gets clear it didn't smell there's no salt like we didn't hit salt or brackish water it actually smells really clean i guess uh, going through all that sand is like the ultimate filter the clay to the sand uh, you, so we're really lucky it wasn't like a stinky sulfur or swamp water or anything like that I think we got really lucky with good water it didn't taste salty. did you taste it oh well, you got it spray in your mouth times sprayed at me. <laughs> it sprayed it. she says it doesn't taste salty so I think it's safe to put on the plants at least and you know hey, the plants get some minerals uh, get all that sandy clay loam stuff it's probably pretty good uh, I will tell you this though one other thing you need to know when you dig up well like this it will clear up because it's only 25 feet you know you didn't go 500 foot in the ground uh where it takes days and days to clear the well you it will clear up probably i would think maybe around 500 gallons like we've cranked through what do we go through about 30 gallons already 35 and then it's around 30 i think yeah 30 gallons to test it and it was just brown soupy water with sand on the bottom and I expect that's going to be about 500 gallons before it, it starts getting clear. But, yeah, as Lorelai says, um, the pressure never let up. So we, it fills, I don't know what the gallons per minute is because I don't have a, maybe when I put on a, an electric pump, we'll figure that out. 
but it fills faster than we can pump. So it is like endless water as yeah. long as you want to stay in there and pump. I mean, I can pump a five gallon bucket in less than five minutes. Yeah, so about a, a you know, you're about a gallon a minute is what you're pumping, right? Yeah, but it's a hand pump. It's only, it goes as fast as we <laughs> Yeah, if you, I guess if you had a young soul that was really hyper, you could just let them on there and pump, 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 it'll go. Uh, again, the only thing I would do is get some extra um, gaskets for your your pump, and this thing will last like forever. I mean, these pitcher pumps. They last forever. And the Simmons, the brand I got is like super old school. Those things are like a hundred years old, and they're up and running fine. All you gotta do is replace a gasket. So just just get those while you can still order them from uh, the Dragon Country. <laughs> That's an awful thing to say. <laughs> But you're not allowed to say the word anymore. YouTube stinks. Uh, speaking of, all of our private videos and what we really think and stuff we talk about that's too censored for YouTube is over on Odyssey, Brighteon, or BitChute. You can find us over there and find the links below. We are building our own homestead here, and we are still looking for a few souls that want to help us with this vision. If you are vegan and you're into more of a spiritual slant uh, and you are concerned about the, the state of the world and kind of just want a safe haven to come hang out at for the next few years, hit us up in the Telegram group and uh, let us know. And you'll find the link below. Just install Telegram and come on and start talking to us. All right, we love you guys. Take care of each other. And I will follow this up with another update later as we secure the pump because right now it's just sticking up on a pipe you can't really hang a bucket on it or nothing so we'll build a base for it and we will also hook up the electric and i'll show you how we did all that off grid because uh we're on solar and completely off grid so we'll show how that works all right take care of each other go get digging dig your own well so we are about 50 gallons into our our well and guess what it finally rains so uh, yeah there's our rain catchment going thank you for that <laughs> so I guess we got water on all fronts now